Hello and welcome. This video will discuss how to simulate the motion of parts within your work cell. As you can see on the screen now, I have already created my second robot to provide the simulated motion of the parts on the conveyor. I have created a small fake sensor uh, photo eye on the conveyor just to give a point of reference. And I've created on the robot not only a hand that is the four boxes that I need to be moving, but I have created them physically on the conveyor as well. There is a fifth box that will be the box that is actually picked up during each cycle of the palletized routine. As I move the robot arm that is controlling my, my part simulation, you can see all four of those parts or those boxes are moving together. They could have been a 3D model instead of just uh, boxes, but that's fine. Doesn't really matter what they are. Uh, they, they're added the way you normally would create a hand within the system anyway. In my hand here, you can see I've created the hand with the four boxes moving back along the Y axis. So we can close that. And then these boxes here, as you can see, as I turn them on and off on the layout tree, are those boxes there. And then to simulate the placement of the boxes after I've turned off the gripper on my Scara robot, I have also created a box for each of those locations. And so 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, 1-3, one, so on and so forth. Now for the boxes that are up on the conveyor and the boxes in my palletize area, I have done a further step and gone down under the properties to condition and selected edit. This will normally default as default up here and this will all be blank below it but i've changed it over to io for valid in simulation only that's what we're doing and for the box i happen to have selected which was one one which is this bat upper left corner i've set that to signal 24. that is a digital output signal as indicated here and when the value is zero is goes to zero it turns the visibility of the box from true to false or on to off. When signal 24 becomes a value of one, it turns the box visibility from off to on. So by driving these outputs, I'm able to simulate the box being there or not being there as I do my process. You will have to do that for each object in the palletize routine or the array or whatever you're doing. And so this one happens to be 19. And then for these boxes here on the conveyor, You'll notice that is 32, but also the next one down is also 32. So I'm able to turn these four boxes on and off together with a single input. The reason the ones down here in the palletize routine are not all tied to a single input is because I want to control them individually. Hopefully that makes sense. So in the layout tree, if I select my robot that is providing the motion, if I go down to robot model, display robot model, I can turn it off. And yes, those boxes look like they're floating in space, but when I move them down and put them in their location and then do a move straight, it will look like these boxes are moving in a straight line along the conveyor, following the conveyor, not the other way around. And so I've created two programs as well. My first program is for the conveyor motion. And if we open that up, it is a fairly simple program. It turns on outputs 31 and 32, which are turning on the moving boxes, as I as what I've labeled here, and the first static box. So the first static box 31 is the one up here at the photo eye, where it's being picked up actually. And the rest are the moving boxes. Now these boxes down here, the moving boxes, are separate from the boxes that make up the hand. And the reason is that as the robot moves from point one to point two, I want the boxes that are just in their resting position to be turned off so I can see the motion. And then I want, once I've gotten to that location, I wanna turn on the boxes in their resting position 
turn off the hand visibly, and that will make these disappear so that when the robot moves back to its starting point at point one in this loop, we don't see the boxes move backwards because that would look kind of silly and odd. So I've set in line 30 the speed, and then I wait for an input signal from the main program. Once that occurs, I make sure that my first, stat my first static box is off because this is being, this signal occurs after I've picked it up with the robot. And so, as you would imagine, that box shouldn't be there once the robot's picked it up. I move to point one, and then I turn on these boxes. And so it moved, point one is back here with this box here being at this location. And then I do a move straight so that this box moves from here to this location, which subsequently means the rest of them move forward. And this first box here, which will, would start off here, is visibly moved to the location of the pickup box. I will then turn on the pickup box, turn on the moving boxes, which will make this box appear, then this box, this box, this box, are overlaid over the static boxes, and so there's no visible difference. I turn the tool off, and then I go back and wait for the next start signal. My main program is a little bit longer, but not necessarily complex. This is nothing more than what we've been doing in the past. As has been discussed in the past, I can assign tool numbers to the hands to control what you visibly see in the simulation. And so I'm using tool one to show an open gripper, tool two to show a closed gripper or a gripper holding the box. I've got a counter for my palletize routine. And then I've got a second counter that I've had to add. And this is only for the simulation. And what it does is it's tying to the outputs that I've selected. And so starting at 16, I can turn on and off in my program at line 240, whatever the count is. And so I can, first time through, I can turn on output 16, it then increments, then I'm turning on output 17, increments, turns on output 18, so on and so forth. And that is how I get the boxes to show up here in this pattern in the sequence I want them to show up in. The one new thing programming wise that I've done in this program is I'm using a subroutine that's calling a secondary program. I could have done this logic in my main program here. You don't have to do it as a subroutine, but that does make things a little bit cleaner and easier. And the subroutine is simple and straightforward. There are no points involved in it. It sets the first output counter and defines my loop point and then all it does is it sets each output back to zero and increments until I've done all of my outputs and so when I first start the program I can run this to turn off all the outputs automatically instead of having to manually remember to do it myself. The one thing I do also want to make sure to point out is that at the end of your program you do have to absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have to have this end if you want to return control from this program back to the calling program, and you cannot have a halt here. If you put a halt here, it will stop execution on the controller, and you won't go back to your calling program. Once the subroutine is done, I define my palette, set my loop point, and then start my motion. And so I've got a point I'm calling clear, one calling above, and then point one, I then close the gripper. So point one is picking up this first box, close the gripper, and then I'm doing some stuff that is only for the simulation in that I turn off the static box, which is that first one up there. And then I in 
and then I tell the conveyor t program to start up and it runs in parallel with the continuation of this program. And so that's how I get that smooth motion of the conveyor running at the same time that I'm doing my palletized uh, sequence. I leave it on for 0.2 seconds and then I turn off that output so that I don't have problems with that box flickering on and off potentially. And then I continue along on my palletized motion. I turn off uh, the static box here just to make sure it's happy. I move to my clear point. I do my calculations for my palletize. I do the placement, let go of the box. And at this point, I am doing that output call I talked about earlier where I am using this counter to drive which output is being triggered. Turn So that turns on the box at location here. And then I turn off the grip. I turn off, I go to tool one, which turns off the gripped box. So now I show an empty gripper. I do my motion, I do my increment, and then I do my loop. And it runs continuously until I've done all the boxes in my palletize routine, and then it halts and ends. And so I'm going to turn the robot back on that does the motion so you can see what is actually happening in the kind of behind the scenes type of a scenario. So I need to start my program for the motion first, and then I'm going to start my palletize routine. You'll notice all those cleared out. And the reason it came down and did that weird motion was because I'd started it up here. If I'd left it down here, it would have uh, it would have just turned off and it would have looked clean. But as you can see, it is, remember there's four boxes here when the gripper is on. And so now the four boxes are there, I can turn it off. And when it goes back, it's off. So I don't see these sliding backwards. Hopefully that makes sense. And here I've got the robot deselected and hidden. And so we get this clean look. Now, one of the things you may want to do as you display your scene is it looks kind of odd that these just suddenly magically peer out of nowhere. It's a magical system where they just spontaneously peer. Not realistic, not very convincing. However, if you carefully set up your scene in a way where this first box is not part of, of the picture, or is only just very barely there, it now looks to the human eye like this box here has just come in along the conveyor. And so now to the, to the uh, casual viewer, it looks like this conveyor is actually moving parts in and that they are being processed and brought over here and left here we don't have a magically appearing box, but instead the box is coming from outside the cell, moving into the cell, moving into our field of view, and providing a reasonable uh, facsimile of what you would actually see if this was a real production and we had real parts moving in. So hopefully this has made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.